Hi everyone, today we're starting our beer course and the first issue I want to talk about is perspective. It's a common mistake that perspective depends on focal length, which isn't actually right, and I'll show you it. So here's a picture I took with 105 millimeters focal length and this picture I took with 24 millimeters. And let's now compare our two bottles. Let's crop the second one. So here's the bottle with 24 millimeters and this one with 105 and as you can see they are identical. So why someone might think that perspective depends on focal length? The thing is if you make focal length smaller you have to go closer closer to your to the product or whatever you're shooting and then perspective changes which actually means that perspective depends on the distance between object and length and lens so here's about one meter between me and the bottle And now I'm changing focal length to 35. And in order to keep the same crop of the image, I have to go closer. And now everything changes. Let me uncrop images. So here is one hundred five millimeters, and this is thirty five. I had to go closer and perspective changed. Okay, so let's now begin, take some pictures and see what effects can we have with different focal lenses and different angles. And let's start with the longest one, 100 millimeters. It's not very common for advertising for any commercial shooting. I'll show you why. As you can see, if we use a long lens, the bottle is pretty flat and it looks small, like a toy bottle. Sometimes you can find such examples in advertising, like here, for example, or here. But it's not a really common thing, usually such long focal lengths used for product photography, catalog shooting, something like this. But it might be, but just not very usual. 
let's now try 70 millimeters instead of 100. This is the most classic focal length for most advertising photography and the most common angle is when your lens is somewhere on label level So as you can see the bottle has much more volume, its bottom is pretty round and it better pops up. Here's a few examples of such focal lengths like here or here. It's pretty classic and it's often used for commercial. Let's now go to 40, no 50, 50 millimeters. The perspective would be a bit bigger since I'm going closer to the bottle. Let's take a look on the previous one. So here is 100. This is 70. And this is 50. This is example of about 50 millimeters. And here's another one. It also, no, not this one. It also used pretty often in advertising. And now I'm gonna go to all the way down to 24. And as you can see, bottle looks really huge, like a building or something. It's really an interesting effect. And it also used quite often in advertising. You can find a lot of such examples. Yeah, so I think that would be it for the first part, and in the next one, I think we'll talk about, I guess, lighting. Yeah, we'll start about lighting. Okay, so let's now start, start talking about lighting. The first thing that I did when I 
bought my first light and actually lots of people do the same thing. I tried to put softbox behind the bottle and I thought I'm gonna get a really great image. It was a mistake and you'll see why. Now As you can already see, the bottle is flat. Let's say it's about light position. Let's try to change it. See if anything can help. It didn't help, it became even worse. Let's try something else. And as you can see, always we get some too sharp, too flat images and there is no way we can do a nice shot with a soft box behind the bottle. So the first thing that you should do is to buy a milky plexiglass piece as bigger is better. About this size would be enough. It's how much? Five feet by three, I guess. Maybe meter by meter and a half. And what do you want to do with it? Is to put behind the bottle somehow and change softbox to a standard reflector. Let's try it now. Just be careful with the light because it's really hot. I guess it's about six five hundred Celsius, and it won't be any good for plexiglass for sure. So just keep it on until you take a picture. and then turn it off. Okay, it's too bright. Let's do something about it.
too much. Okay, better. But now, plexiglass piece stays too close to the bottom. Let's try to put it a bit back. You see how it already looks way better than with soft box. And let's try a few different options. You can put uh, light to the left, right, anywhere. Let's see how it's gonna look now. You can get lots of interesting effects with it. Looks really cool, right? Let's try to put it even closer. Okay, good. You can try to put it really low. I'm gonna take the light in my hand and try different options. So as you can see, with the only light reflector and a piece of milky plexiglass, you can get almost endless opportunities to build lots of different light schemes, great light schemes. Let's take a look what images do we get. And choose one of them and continue with the slide. I kind of like this one on this one. Yeah, let me find the tripod as low as I can find. It would be a really good idea to use some really small light stands like this one or there are actually even little ones like this so you can basically put light on the floor. Sometimes it's very useful. Let's try this one.
Okay, so we need to choose where will be the light, on the right side or on the left. So, I think I like, I like this light. Let's add some reflexes on the front of the bottle. And again, let's try to use softbox. Okay, looks nice. Let's take a closer look. And if you look closer to this image, we'll see two problems. The first one is that there are fabric wrinkles inside the reflection because fabric on the softbox has it. And of course, it reflexes here. We need to fix this one. And the other problem is that light from softbox goes to a plexiglass piece. And we lose a lot of volume in the bottle. Like here, we see lots of dark areas. And we totally lost them in this image. So what we want to do is to put plexiglass farther away from the bottle as far as we can have as we can as far as we can do it. And and we need to use another piece of plexiglass for reflection because it's totally smooth and you'll see how much better it would be. So plexiglass goes maybe three feet behind the bottle. It should be enough to keep it from softbox light. Again, let's start with just one light to recreate previous scheme. Okay, almost. A bit lighter. Okay, great. So now I'm taking a small piece of plexiglass and it goes here. And I'm placing light right behind it. Okay, great. <laughs> I need a lot in other light stand a bit smaller because you can see soft box under the plexiglass.
And again. Okay, let's now take a look in this reflection. And we'll see the difference. It's absolutely clean. It's just perfect. You won't need to fix anything in Photoshop if you use plexiglass. And it's not the only good thing about plexiglasses. Uh, let me show you a couple of tricks. So if you take your light and you put it by 90 degrees to plexiglass, like here, Not enough. Still. I changed aperture from 16 to, to how much to 13 because there wasn't enough light on the right side and I think I'm going to go to 11 yeah now it's better so that's what we have here we got a great faded reflex and we got this effect by putting the um, softbox by 90 degrees. We can try to do it faded on both sides. Uh, in order to get it we need to keep some distance between the plexiglass and light maybe I don't know 10 centimeters let's try yeah you see now the light the reflects it's faded on both sides and it look it looks really cool okay so let's keep this reflex here and and add another one on the on the left side By the way, as for camera settings, shutter speed is is what is one hundredth a second. It doesn't mean, mean anything because exposition is only depends on lights. So shutter speed might be one hundred one by I don't know two hundred. Doesn't matter at all. And aperture, everything from 8 to 16 would work. All we need to do is to have to keep uh, the product in focus. So it doesn't really matter. Studio photography is not field photography. So you don't need to worry about 
in the camera parameters. I've changed ISO from 15 to 100. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now let's take another plexiglass piece and put it on another side. Or, yeah, maybe not really a good idea. It would be better to take this plexiglass and light and put it on another side, took some pictures and then compose images in Photoshop. So let's first um, finish on this side and then go to the other side. Let's try to use reflector instead of softbox. Okay, great. Something else different. Okay, cool. Yeah, one more thing. Now it's fading from the center to the side. Now let's have it the other way. Yeah, that's great. Now let's go to the other side. Okay, so what should we do here? I think I would want like really thin reflex that goes on the very side of the bottle. Let's try to do it. Yeah, I think I would place plexiglass by the angle. Okay, let's try. It almost, except that it's too bright and too thick. I think plexiglass was too close to the bottle. Yeah. Okay. Looks better. But still too bright. Okay, let's change ISO from 100 to 50. 
because the light light is on its minimum now it can go any lower okay great and I think the last thing I'm gonna do is to get one extra picture with the light on label Yeah, that's another problem. The thing is, this light, it stands too far away from the light behind the bottle. So this light doesn't see flash from that light, uh, which means it doesn't work. And let's think what we can do about it. I think I'd need the third light. I'm gonna use it with only one purpose. This light will work from flash from that light and that light which I need it will work from light from this one. Okay, let's try. Okay, great, and it worked. It's always better to have uh, all lights synchronized, but you know, to have to have it, you need to buy things for all of the lights and it must be a bit costly but as you can see there is always a way to have your light works even if it doesn't see sometimes it actually happens when there is too too much sunlight in the room uh, it's so bright that your lights doesn't see light from the main light so yeah but there is always a way to fix it and I think we're done with basics about lighting. What we're gonna do next is to take a few bottles and try all techniques we just learned. Hi everyone! So we went through some basics about lighting and lighting schemes. Let's now do something creative. And since there are almost no advertising photos with no uh, water drops or matte effect on the bottles. I'm gonna do um, anti-spot uh, spray so the bottle would be less glossy and then I'm gonna put some water drops on the bottle so it look, would look like the bottle is really cold uh, with water in it and there are two effects for it. There are a few brands who do them, produce them. Uh, I use Condor Photo Anti Spot, but you may use any of them. Here's also was Condor Photo Dew effect, but now there's just um, glycerin with water. 
I guess, about one-third of glycerin and two-thirds of water. And it works pretty well. So, okay, let's prepare the barrel. So what I want to do first is to put anti-spot spray on the bottle, about 45 degrees and 20, 25 centimeters from the bottle. I guess I need some more. It usually works better when it's new. This one may be a few years old. It doesn't work as well as it used to be. So sometimes I need to put more of it. Yeah, I guess that would be enough. And now glycerin with water. Yeah, I guess let's go. Glycerin could leave a real mess around the place when you put it on the bottle. So you want to use something like this to keep the space clean. Okay, great. I think bottle looks great. Now let's start building a light scheme. I'm going to start with, um, uh, with light behind the bottle. I would need the smallest stand, light stand I had, I've got. I I would probably use even smaller one if I've got it. But that should be okay too. Okay, let's do some tests. I want to slide right in the middle, right behind the bottle.
Okay, it's too dark. So what I want to do is to make it a bit lighter. And I also can see, um, how does it call, reflector behind the bottle. So I'm going to need to put it slower, lower. Okay, let's try again. Nope. Okay, that looks way better, but I still see reflector, so I'm gonna put it closer to the bottle and a bit lower. Awesome. Okay, so let's now add some more lights. I want water drops have more volume. I want to add reflexes on them. And in order to get this, I'm going to use portrait dish. It's bigger than um, regular reflector. And that's why it has bigger reflections in drops, water drops. But still, it's uh, sharp enough light from it. Not as soft as with soft boxes. So water drops would have quite nice shadow underneath. Okay, let's take one more picture. Now we can see reflexes on water drops. So they look way nicer now, but we need to find a perfect place for this light. I think I'll try to put it more in front and maybe make it a bit lighter. Let's try to put it lower, maybe. Or higher. And see the difference.
I think I like it higher because when it stands too low, the bottle is uh, it loses some contrast. No, I still don't like it because I don't see reflections in uh, in water drops in front of the bottle. Maybe let's try to put it even more in front. It also depends on the bottle. If the bottle would be darker, this light would work better. Okay, so now I can see reflexes right here in the middle on every drop yeah that's better but as you see we got a lot of small drops right here on the label I think I would like to add some more glycerin there. again yeah that's better That's how it's gonna look like after I'll do retouching something like this, but let's go back to default. Okay, cool. So the final step, what I wanna do is to put, to use one more light. I'm gonna put it right here in front of the bottle in order to get some light on the label. And what I want to use is a big piece of milky plexiglass. I'm gonna bend it over the camera, something like this. So it would, um, so I would get a big reflex on the label as large as I can get. Now let's let me get one more light. We'll try different options with light, higher, lower, 
maybe on sides. Let's start with high position. Okay, great. Okay, cool. Let's do some tests. Camera is on two seconds delay, so I would have time to bend the plexiglass from my side. Put it down. The light in front didn't work. Let's fix it. It's gonna work now. One more. Okay, great. Now we've got a lot of light on the label. And I think I would um, clip it from this picture and mix it in Photoshop with some other pictures. And let's now do a couple more options with the light somewhere here on the right side. One more. And the same thing with the light on the left side. Okay, cool. So I think now I've got we've got enough material and what I'm gonna do is to process images, open them in Photoshop and see what we can do with them. Here's another great thing about glycerin water drops. It's about twenty four hours left since the photo shot and as you can see drops are still perfect. So you can easily continue your photo shot next day or even the day after the next day. So it's way better than using just water drops. Beer is not just a bottle, sometimes it's cans. And the problem with cans is that they are too glossy. So it also might be a good idea to put some anti-reflex spray on it and also have some drops. So I'm gonna use the same effects. Okay, great, and now some glycerin drops.
Okay, I think it looks nice now. Let's try it. I want this image to have uh, really high contrast, so it would be not totally in light. So I'm gonna use just one light with a strip box, and I'll take some pictures with different position of the light, and then I'm gonna compose all photos in Photoshop. I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. So what I want to do is to uh, take light in my hand, so I would have an opportunity to change position very quickly and see how it looks. So I want to have one very sharp light on one side of the can, and the same on the other. Yeah, I think it's great. I'll, maybe I'll try to do it even more narrow, maybe a bit lighter. Yeah, that's good. So what I want to do is just to take some pictures with different options. I don't know which one would look better at the end. So it's always a good idea to have enough options. Okay, great. So let's now go to the other side. and do exact, exact the same thing here. Just remember to check that you've got the same pictures from both sides. Yeah, I think they similar enough. Okay, so now I only need to add some light on the front side of the can. Maybe even not without a reflex in front. So I'm gonna put the light at the top And again, a few options. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I think it looks great. Just imagine how it's gonna look like when we put all three images all together in some way. Let's also check reflection. 
in surface I think it's not bright enough so what I want to do is to make the light maybe on full power so I would have a really light um, reflection in surface yeah that's way better Let's take a final look. That's gonna be the main image, main photo. And then I'll add left side from maybe this picture or this one. And the right side from this or maybe that. We'll see later. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And now it's only be retouching. With this bottle, we'd like to um, add an interesting effect. We'd like to keep sides of the bottle glossy uh, in order to get sharp reflexes. But we'd like to put some anti-spot, anti-reflex spray on the front side of the bottle and add some water drops uh, on the front and that would be so it's like half matte half glossy let's see how it's gonna look like So anti-reflex spray goes only on the front side, maybe not even here, maybe just lower. And I'll try to keep it out from label. Yeah, I guess I put too much. Um, I, I kept spray too close to the bottle, so I'm gonna clean the bottle and do it all over again. It goes off easily with a piece of fabric, so so there is nothing to worry about if you did something wrong the first time. Let's try again. Yeah, I think that would be enough. And now water drops, which is, I'd like to remind you, is glycerin, one third of glycerin and two thirds of water.
there is no need to put drops all over the bottle some parts could stay clean sometimes it looks even better and maybe more natural yeah I think that would be enough okay so the bottle goes on the table So eventually the bottle will be standing on a green background and usually it's better to uh, to photograph an object on a green background also if it will be on green later in the final image. So what I want to do is to use green or yellow plus blue gels which goes on a reflector behind the bottle just remember to turn off pilot lamp otherwise it will burn Okay, cool. So let's find firstly the perfect spot for this light. It could be standing right in the middle or somewhere on the side. If light goes here on the left side of the bottle then the right side of the bottle will be lighter. And the other way around. If it goes here on the right side then left side of the bottle will be lighter because a bottle with water in it refracts light this way. There is another light turned on here. Let's turn it off. Try again. I think I'm pretty happy with what we get. So let's now add reflex right here on the left side of the bottle. And what I want to do is to use uh, a piece of milky plexiglass. So the piece of plexiglass goes right here. Okay, great. And I'm gonna need one more light.
or I'll be using strip box because I want to reflex will be really narrow. And by placing strip box by 90 degrees to plexiglass like that, but a bit behind, I'll get fading reflex. Almost. Um, the light is on its maximum, so I think I'll make ISO higher, 200, and light behind the bottle a little slower. Okay, a bit too bright, and it's not really sharp here, so a bit too much matte spray there. Let's see if if I can fix it. I'm not sure how it's gonna look like, but you don't know unless you try. Okay, I think it's better now, so the left side of reflex is sharp. Now we can see better that it's a glass, not some plastic. Let's clean a bit right here. Try again. Uh, 
Okay, great. So yeah, now I like the left side, except one more, one little thing. Now this part a bit cleaner. Yeah, great. Okay, so we we are done with the left side, and now I'm gonna take plexiglass and light on the other side. Okay, cool. I don't want any inter interference between lights on, on the sides, on the left and right side. So that's why I don't usually use two lights on the side of the bottle and do just two shots from the left side and the right one. On the right side of the bottle, we've got pretty white, um, dark part. So we can do something interesting here. We can try a few options with uh, different reflexes. They could be more narrow or more wide. Oops. It didn't work because I didn't turn it on. Let's try again. Perfect. Except water drops right here and here. Uh, too small. Let's make them bigger and nicer. Yeah, much better. Okay, so now try a few different position of the light. And maybe not so bright.
Yeah, let's make it wider. And lighter. Or even more. I think if we need to make reflex on the side wider, we'd better use another softbox, which is wider itself. Okay, let's try now. Okay, so now we got really wide and great reflex. I'm not sure I'm gonna use this image, but it's better to have it in case we need it. At least label looks really bright and great. So one more option and I guess we'll be done. Yeah, I think we've got enough material and then we'll be done with it. So that's pretty much it. See you in Photoshop. Some beer bottles have great um, like logo embosses on glass. That's one of my favorites, it's Grolsch. It has a huge logo embossed on, on its side and we're gonna shoot it. Let's see the composition. Yeah, great. So that's the composition and now we're gonna need to make it looks great. First of all, of course, we're gonna need a light somewhere on the background behind the bottle. And you need to remember that uh, how the light refracts in cylinders. So if the light would be somewhere here on the top, it will refract on the bottom and the other way around. So let's try here and then put light close to the floor. And let's now compare two pictures. That's the image with the light. 
um, over the bottle and this is the image with the light close to the floor and I think we're gonna go with something like this we just need to find the best place for for the light let's try yeah maybe something like that yeah pretty nice maybe a bit too bright Let's try one more. Um, yeah, I think it looks great. Let's keep it this way for, for a while. Maybe change it later. Um, for the second light, I like to use softbox, strip softbox. I want to get um, a real thin and sharp reflex right on the logo somewhere so. yeah kind of and in order to keep reflex the same width uh, from the bottom to the top of the logo, I think we should place softbox parallel to the bottle surface. Yeah, and I think it should be a bit wider. Nope, didn't work. Let's fix it. This light doesn't see um, light from that light, so it didn't work. So what I'm gonna do is to put like something white on it, so it will work too. Yeah, great, except for two things. First of all, is too bright and the second problem that it has some dust I need to clean it too bright yeah great okay cool Maybe let's try to I don't know to place this reflex a bit lower or maybe higher. Let's see if it look better. I think it looks pretty nice too. Maybe we can take those reflexes in Photoshop and mix them. 
Let's try to put it even lower and a bit higher. I think they all look pretty nice. I'm not sure which one I like the best now. I think I'm gonna decide later. Um, what else we can do? We can try to use um, a plexiglass and have a to have a fading reflex. And in order to get uh, fading reflex, we need to turn um, softbox by 90 degrees. Let's see, how can I do it? Maybe I can't. No, I guess I'm gonna need, I would need a uh, light stand with extension, which I don't have, so I think I'm just gonna ask Max to help me here. So the light would go here and it will stand like that. Yeah, maybe. And the plexiglass goes right here and a bit lower. Let's keep it for a while. Yeah, kind of, but we need to change it to its maximum and put it, yeah, I think very close to it. Lower. Yeah, I think it also looks great. Maybe, you know, let's try to make a few more images with different angles. Let's try to make it not so wide. Yeah, I think that's cool. Let's get back light on its stand. And since we got everything set up, let's also try to add some anti reflex spray on the glass. Let's see if it's gonna work or not. 
I think it will. Glass always looks great when it's a bit matte. Okay, let's see how it's gonna look now. I forgot to make it not so bright. Yeah, that's better. And it'll look even better if we add some drops. Okay, I think that's enough. Actually, let's take one picture without the second light. It might also look great. Yeah, and it definitely do. Okay, great, let's use salt box along with the first light. That's great. Okay, cool. And yeah, I think we need to try to use Potter dish. It usually looks great on water drops. Yeah, pretty good, but too bright. And it doesn't go any lower, so I think I'm gonna switch, change ISO to 50. OK, 
Okay, let's see now. Okay, great, I think we can even make it a bit lighter. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, one more thing. Let's try to put light somewhere here on background. Now, nothing. Maybe let's make it brighter once again now I don't see anything good happened with light over there so I think we're done with this bottle let's now see how can we compose those images together in order to get the perfect image when we planned this course, we wanted to show you how to use color filters, uh, which is also known as gels, for adding some mood uh, to pictures. For example, sometimes um, a bottle could stay, could stand on a maybe a bar, so there would be yellow, orange light, warm light from the bar side, and maybe. Um, cold blue reflex on the other side from the window and we wanted to show you how to how to get such images by using color filters but during the working of this course we actually invented the whole new way of shooting beer and composing images in Photoshop and we decided to show you this instead so I think it would be easier to show you how we're gonna use, how we're gonna compose images in Photoshop. And for now, we'll just take some pictures with different lights, and then you'll see um, what we can do with it. So there will be two lights, the one on the background, the one on the left side, and the other one, the third one, on the right side and we'll have two options for each light which will give us eight options um, at the end so let's start Turn off this light again. Okay, that's gonna be first option for the background light. And this one will be the second. Okay, great. So we're done with the slide. I'm just going to turn it off. Yeah, we don't need it anymore. And now it's turn on the second light.
Okay, option one. And option two would be with plexiglass. I don't see much difference. Let's delete this image. I think I'm going to use the other last stand. Okay, one more time. Okay, I think that's enough difference between two images. And we're done with this side. And I'm going to the other one. I'd like to make this reflex a bit lighter, so I'm changing ISO to 160 instead of 50. Okay, great. And just one more image. Let's try to get a really wide fading reflex. Nope. I think we're gonna need exactly a 90 degrees angle.
Okay, one more time. Yeah, great, almost. Maybe not so bright. Okay, great. So I think I can delay it to those. So we have two options for the first light, two for the second, and two for the third. And let's now see how magic happens. Okay, so that are the three images that we have. The one for background and glass. That's the beautiful reflex on the right side of the bottle. And also label. And this thing, I don't know how does it call like a hat, top label hat, and the third image with light on the left side of label and the top of the bottle. I've got three clipping paths for bottle, label, and this thing on top of the bottle. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put all three layers in a group and create a mask for them. Then copy one of the images and it will be our background. And let's actually create one more group inside the bottle group for the label. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, one more thing. I need to change blending mode of the whole group to normal. In this case, correction layers will not affect background, no matter what we do inside this group. Okay, let's delete it. And I'm going to start with the background. I think I'm gonna need to make this piece of surface a little bit higher. I would like to make um, border edge between surface and background a little bit smoother. Okay. And I think it should be a little bit lighter.
Okay, good. And let's draw some dark areas around the bottom. Let's try to make it multiply and maybe not so dark. Okay. And I guess it should be green. And in this case, we need to use curves or any other color correction tool, but I prefer curves. So less red and less blue. Okay. I don't like those white area. I think I want to try to copy a left part of the background on the right. Okay, apply, flip. Okay, good. And now let's erase the part that we don't need. Yeah, I like it way better. Okay, good. And the center probably should be a little bit lighter. Okay. One more Gaussian blur. Okay, good. Now the bottle. It has a really sharp edge right now, the mask, so by double click the mask I am able to change sharpness I think, I usually use 0 0.7, 0 0.6 pixels Alright, so two images 
should be composed into one. So I'm gonna use mask and fill the mask with black and open the right part of the bottle. and then erase some part of it. I want to have really smooth and a little bit thinner reflex. Okay, I think that's good. And I want it to be also greener. So again, curves, less red, less blue and probably lighter the whole thing yes yeah, something like this okay Yeah, wait. Okay, and the other layer. Let's try to make it lighter on the left part. I think that would look really cool. Yeah, I like it better. Now I think we should clean the bottle. We definitely do not need that light reflection on the side. It's pretty easy to get rid of it. I'm just going to create a new layer, pick a color from the side of the bottle take brush and then just draw forgot to make opacity 100% okay Okay, that's it. Let's check if there are any other light reflections right here. Okay, done. Okay, that's it. All those things are not really nice. And all of them are on this layer. Just in case, I want to have a copy of it. And I'm gonna use, how does it call, patch tool to get rid of all these things that I don't need. It's also on this layer. Okay.
Okay, that's better. Now I want to make this part a bit darker. And after that, I can start working on label and top label. Okay. So this layer is for left part. So I'm going to put a mask on it. Fill it black as usual. Take a razor tool and open some areas over there. There is a thin black stripe, I think it's on background. Yes, it is. Okay, that's better. And the same for the label. Okay, good. And blending mode for the group with labels also normal. And probably I need selective color to make white whiter. Let's see how does it work. No, not really good. Maybe just curves as usual. But not for those lights, light areas. Okay, I think something like this would be awesome. All right, let's now copy labels, merge all layers, apply mask. And fix the label because it's turned a little bit. Okay, I think that should be fine. Okay, this is on another layer. So let's go on this layer. And clean the area under the label. Yeah, by the way, there is a little thing that should be cleaned up. Oh, wrong layer. Oh, 
Okay, almost done. I think a little bit of contrast wouldn't hurt. Channel mixer in monochrome mode and overlay blending mode usually works pretty well. No, I don't think we need it. Let's try to make it a bit brighter, the whole thing, the whole image. Okay, that's better. Well, I think it looks really great right now. So I'm done with it. All right, everybody, Miller time. So there the three images from the Photoshop. This one, as you probably remember, goes as uh, a picture of bottle with drops, and those two are for label and cup label. I've already got passes for them. So let's clip the images. Group. Okay, that's gonna be another group. All right. And I think we are gonna need a little more of background. Again, the light mask, control click, control shift click, control shift alt, and click on the man path. Okay, now it's better. So the background is usually on. Miller advertising would be black, maybe with some light on it. Let's see later. Let's first of all add some feather on masks. All right. There should definitely need be lots of contrast. Okay, good. So background, what do we do? Let's make it look like, like there is light right under the bottle. It shouldn't be too hard, too complicated. Let's pick a color somewhere from the bottom. All right. Need some Gaussian blur. Not too much though. Okay. And maybe some motion blur wouldn't hurt. Okay, great. 
Now I'll duplicate the layer. And again the same blur and motion blur. And duplicate one more time. Alright, so this layer should be a bit lighter and maybe overlay. Let's actually make it white. Duplicate one more time. Make it white also and also overlay. Yeah, that's something. Okay, that's way better. Okay, cool. Now I wanna duplicate those layers and put them behind the bottle Let's actually try to make it even lighter. Yeah, maybe too much. Okay, let's get back to the bottle. Since we've got light behind the bottle, maybe it would look nice if there will be pretty light um, sides of the bottle fill it with black pick a razor tool and open the mask on the sides Maybe even lighter. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, maybe something like this. Okay, let's take a look on the edge. A bit too light over here. And the same on the other side. Alright, so labels, label and top label. 
I want to have as wide as possible light at the center so I'm going to compose those two images Okay, I think now I can merge them and I'll probably would need to separate groups the one for the label and the other one for the top label apply Okay, let's fix an angle first. I think I'm gonna need to redraw the path. Okay, save the path. And create new oops again the same. Control Shift Alt click on the excited mask and create one. Okay, great. Let's now fix it. Yeah, that's better. Zero point six. Fantastic. All right, let's work on labels. Should be way brighter. Something like this. Copy it. Send there. And maybe too much for top label. I think it would be better if sides of labels would be darker. Let's try it anyway. And I think that's 
a bright spot behind the bottle, maybe too big. Let's make it smaller. Oops. Wrong way. Yeah, that's it. All right. It's a little bit bad that I need to fix it. So this bright spot should go. Let's try to do it a simple way. And darken. No, it didn't work well. Okay. Let's go. A bit more complicated way. And we'll work with stamp tool. Okay, good. And again. Background. Doesn't look really nice until it has some noise. Okay, that's better. And since the bottle has those bright light areas on the sides, I think label should have them too. Okay, maybe not so bright on the left side though. I think we're almost there. Let's see 
Power one channel mixer. Maybe too much contrast. Just a little bit less. Okay. Those areas, they are almost white, or actually totally white. Let's fix it. Let's pick a color from the label. Make it a little bit more golden. Too much green. Okay, that's better. So the last thing to do is to create a reflection. So let's copy all bottle layers, merge them, flip again, flip and use warp tool Right. Then I think I'm gonna need to use a black background for reflection because um, if you blur it without anything, without background, there will be um, white light areas on the sides and we don't need them. Let's use field blur. Okay, fine, apply, and it probably would need some transparency.
Okay, and then I'm gonna need to apply noise one more time. And that will be all. There are three images from the Photoshop, and I don't think we would even need a clip and pass. So I'm just gonna put all those layers in one file, create a black background, and combine them. And it's fairly easy to do. All I need to do is just to put a mask on a layer filled with black, take the razor tool and open some area in the mask under the mask that I need and do the same with the other layer. We can make those lights on the sides a bit more narrow. I think that would look better in this case. Let's try again, make it more accurate. And the same for the other one. All right, cool. Now some contrast. Looks like it's a little bit turned. Okay, that's better. Maybe some red and green up would be nice make it a little bit more golden but not yellow yeah I think that's okay let's try to increase saturation Okay, cool, I like it. Although I don't much like this sharp border. Okay.
last breaks. And I think that's it. Or maybe it would be better to make white areas a little bit more white just to take all colors out. Yeah, that's cool. It actually could be done or during the Photoshop or I mean during the photo shoot, but that would be pretty complicated lighting scheme and it would take a lot of time to build a scheme while it's fairly easy to do in Photoshop just take three pictures as we did and then just combine them within five minutes sometimes things could be done way easier, way simpler in Photoshop than during the f photo shooting. So yeah, that's it with this image. Let's go to another one. That's the three best images we got on the Photoshop. I've already created clipping path. So let's drag and drop all three files into one and put them into a group. I want to start with creating a nice background for our image. Okay, the bottle goes to the center. Okay, cool. Double click on the mask to add some feather so it wouldn't be too sharp on the edge. Okay, background. I think I'm gonna go with standard Heineken green background. I think green from the bottle should fit. Okay, there. Maybe a bit too dark. Would be better. Okay. Now we need a light behind the bottle. Something lighter. That should be okay brush and let's draw some light it should look like light from behind that also reflects us in the surface so we need to copy this light and it'll go somewhere here under the bottle all right I see some edges I know it's better
Okay, so how do we make it look real? I think we need to make a quick reflection just to have an idea how, it's, how it looks. Set some opacity probably to you know, let's make it 90%. Okay, great. And the slide in the center. It doesn't have to be a circle. Could be a little higher. And I want it goes dark. the sides so let's draw some black really dark areas around probably it would be a good idea to make it multiply Okay, so now it starts. It is starting looks like something. Almost great. Free transform, and here's a great tool called Warp. Sometimes it's really useful. The slide spot doesn't uh, feed the perspective, should be a bit more flat on the top of it. You know, it looks better. Yeah, by the way, let's save the file. And make it a bit darker on the sides. Yeah, that looks awesome. So it goes to group, and that would be background. Now the bottle. I'm not sure I would need this picture. I think those two would be enough with the reflex the left side of the bottle and on the right side let's align them okay
Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so what would be would be the best way to compose two of those images into one? I guess that would be linear dodge. Yeah, let's start the lead. Nice. I think it could be more contrast for sure. So I want to change blending mode of the folder of the group to normal. So none of the layers like curves or hue saturation or anything would affect layers outside the group. And since the bottle is standing on green background, I think those reflexes are a bit too, you know, black and white. So I think we can remove some red from the image and add some green into it. Maybe a bit blue. No. It's better when it's less blue there. Okay. That's better. And we definitely don't need those light areas on the edge of the bottle. So I'm just gonna draw some dark areas there. And that should be fine. Pick a color, dark color, from somewhere close to the side, to the edge of the bottle. Okay, that's it. And the same goes for, for those little reflexes. better okay what next I'm gonna need to clean the bottle a bit like this area over there and maybe those numbers but that will be the last step after I do all color correction and merge layers let's try to change opacity a bit I feel like the right side may be a bit too bright Okay, let's anyway copy the files. So we will still have those copies. Now it 
looks awful. Let's get back. There's no way back. Okay, delete it. So maybe it will help just to copy this area. Put it over there. Put a mask on it. And erase it a bit. Still looks too dirty. Okay, that's better. Okay, so let's match colors between background and bottle. Maybe it could be a little brighter spot behind the bottle. Let's try to copy the layer, fill it with white, set probably overlay, blending mode and make it a bit smaller. Yeah, I think it will work. Looks pretty good. Okay, great. Let's stop with the bottle and work on reflection. There's a great instrument, the great tool in Photoshop. Let me show you. So copy the folder or copy the group. Merge all layers, apply the mask, flip, and then I'm gonna use transform warp one more time. Okay, and then I wanna go. To filters and probably field blur. I want the surface where the bottle is standing would be like semi glossy plastic. So the reflection should be sharp on the edge and blurry outside so it's further from the bottle is blurry okay apply And reflection goes here. There is a problem areas. I'm not sure how to get rid of it, so let's 
actually went a few steps back and probably copy the background merge it and merge with the reflection and then reapply the same filter okay that's better Okay, great. Now my favorite way to add some contrast. Channel mixer and monochrome. Overlay blended mode. And some opacity. And some curves. To make it a bit brighter. Too much. Okay. So what would be? Yeah, the last step is to copy background, merge it, and we need to add some noise to it, so it wouldn't look so unnatural. Yeah, this is way better than this. So yeah, I think that will be all. Looks like I like everything I see. Yeah, good. Let's work on an, the next image. I like both options with water drops and without, so I guess we just should do two images. Let's start with this one. I don't think we need such high image. It more like brand mower format or outdoor so oops yeah I think that would be right I like those are reflexes over there. I'm gonna try to take them from this image and to put here. Let's check the horizon. Yeah, looks perfect. Okay, cool.
So how do we take those reflections from the image? I think color range will help. Select color range. Okay. I don't think we need the actual reflexes from this image. Just the form, the shape. So I'm just going to fill the new layer with white. Or maybe the best way would be to put a mask on this layer and then make this layer lighter yeah and it's some feather 1.6 looks pretty good okay great I think it's way better All right, so what's next? I think I'd like to have more green in this reflection and in the whole image. Not too much though. Maybe less red. Okay, there is something needs to be cleaned up. Okay, almost. Maybe some contrast. Yeah, sixty would be enough. Well, looks like that's all. Let's clean some stuff. Over there. And we're done. Okay, let's work on another image. Canvas size five two four one. Five two four one two eight zero six. Okay. I like both images would have the same format. This needs to be aligned. Okay. 
okay. I like that white reflection, but I think it should be a bit darker. So I just change the opacity of the layer to 40%. And let's actually try to copy all those correction layers over here. and probably those reflections as well the only difference is that they definitely should be not so bright I guess something like this would be the best. Maybe that part, background, should be black or at least a bit darker. Okay. I also want to try to make logo a bit lighter. The whole image is about the logo, so as brighter it is, is better. It should be visible from long distance if it's outdoor. And I think that's it also. Okay, great. So we've got two great images in just a bit over 10 minutes so there are six images from the footage shot and let me now explain what we're gonna do with them the thing is when you change layer mode to linear dodge it summarizes lights from both images so if on this image there is only one light, back light behind the bottle and in this image there is only left light and you change its mode, blended mode to linear dodge the bottle looks like you've got actually two lights on the photo shot and the same goes for the third image if we change its blending mode looks like we have all three lights turned on. 
and it gives huge opportunities um, during the post-production because now we can turn on and off all of that all of them all of those images we can for example change their opacity and it works as like we would decrease and increase light power during the photoshop but with the difference that we can do it right now although the photo shoot is over a few days ago and since we've got all lights in separate layers we can change its colors the colors and that would look like we actually use color filters during photoshop like if we take some green out of the right light and some red and blue we've got cold reflex on the right side of the bottle we could use blue filter during the photo shoot but in this case we've got blue image we've got blue reflex on the right side and there is no way we can change it easily on post-production but now if we decide that we don't want um, blue reflex we can make it yellow or red or whatever whatever else especially it works great when your client not sure of what they want and in this case you can just take a few pictures a few shots and then combine them the way you and the client likes so let's close all those images and decide how we're gonna compose images so if I have to choose between two of those I think I'm gonna go with this one this top one I like how reflex fading to the center so I'm deleting the first light and as for the left one yeah, let's see how it's gonna look I think it's too sharp that would be better okay and as for backlights I like the second one okay great so now we've got one backlight one left and one right I will already got clipping path so let's put all those layers in a group and mask them and that's gonna be our background so let's first copyright part of the background flip it and put it on the left side okay and I think background would be better if it would green
yes something like this okay so since it's planned uh, as an image with a um, color reflexes let's add some color I think that cold reflex would look pretty good This layer is not perfectly aligned. Let's first fix it. Okay, good. So the left one. I'm not sure we need it. At least not on the bottom. Okay, let's only keep this light on the label and top label. Let me clip the label quickly. Okay, and then nope, I did something wrong. So this light goes into a group, and the mask goes to it. Okay. So the right light is only gonna be on the label and the left on the label and on the bottle and I think it might be a good idea to have two separate lights left lights for the labels and the bottle because I like when the reflex on the bottle is brighter but if I duplicate it then the label would become too bright okay that's better I don't like the surface the bottle is standing on So let's do something about it. I want to copy reflection. 
just in case. Okay, duplicate, flip. I think it looks better. Okay, what else? Maybe it will work if I make background and surface two separate parts. Let's try it. Okay, let's get back to the bottle. I think reflection needs some more red in it. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and the bottle is too too bright. At the bottom. Let's make it darker. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now the bottle is standing on the surface where it should be. Yeah, I didn't add some feeder. Let's do it. Maybe one pixel would be better. Okay, cool.
I think label looks a bit dirty to gray. I think it should be a bit lighter. but has less contrast. Not too much. Let's try. 15 or 16 percent. Okay. So I think selective color could work here. White and take all colors out of it. Neutrals, no, too much. No, it only made reflexes lighter. Okay, let's try cars. And then make dark parts darker. Okay, great. So, how about channel mixer? Okay, let's keep it. Okay, that's it. So you've just seen how we combined lights to images shot separately and then combined them into one image. And that's a pretty powerful technique that could help you in your work. So I hope you'll find it useful also. And I think we're done here.